Hey everyone, welcome to Build Your SaaS. This is the behind the scenes story of building a web app in 2018. I'm John Buda, a software engineer. And I'm Justin Jackson. I'm a product and marketing guy and really a child of the internet. Same. I think uh, we're going to get into that today. Follow along as we build Transistor.fm. And reflect on our childhoods. Exactly. This is going to be a nostalgia-heavy episode. Maybe a, a, a palate cleanser, maybe, from the, the usual talk we have. <laughs> Not so much focused on Transistor, but sort of how we got to where we are and I guess where we started with technology. and Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of um, going back, getting our tech origin stories. Yeah. Uh, before we do that, do you want to just give a shout out to our Patreon supporters? Yeah, yeah we have a few. Um, Darby Frey, who's in Chicago, good friend of mine. He runs leadhonestly.com. So thanks, Darby. And then we've got Kevin Markham and Adam Duvander. And Dave Junta, also another Chicago friend. See how I lay, I, I left Dave Junta for you to say this time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good plan. I wonder if I should move my, my camera here so I'm actually looking at you. There we go. There we so go. yeah, thanks to all of our uh, Patreon supporters. Yeah, and if you, uh, I think if you're just on the internet and you're trying to find our Patreon, I believe it's just... Uh, John, patreon.com, John Justin. Let me, let me make sure. John Justin, J-O-N-J-U-S-T-I-N. Yeah, there it is. And, uh, yeah, this all, our goal right now is we're at $84 a month and that basically covers one episode's worth of editing. So when we edit this up, we get we hire uh, Chris Enns in Saskatchewan, Canada, to edit these episodes, and that's what pays the bills. So yeah, thanks to all those folks. Um, so yeah, you, this was your idea. You thought, Justin, this yeah. time? Yeah, I mean, I think this is kind of based on a discussion we briefly had in Portland. Oh, that's right. And we sort of went down this road of, of like, I don't know, BBSs and games we played. And mm -hmm. we sort of had a similar introduction to technology and computers, I would say. Yeah. I mean, be, being from the same time period. That's right. Up. Yeah, I was born in 1980. <laughs> what, what year are you again? Are you 81? I'm 81, yeah. 81. Yeah. So, so pre-anything, pre really. I yeah. mean, there was... Pre pre cell phones, pre cell phones, pre. I guess well, I don't know. Atari was out. Nintendo was eighty. I don't know what year that was. I mean, yeah, Atari was out. So I I don't remember like older kids had Atari. I yeah. definitely remember when the NES came out. Yeah, that was like that was a huge huge um day. <laughs> it was. Yeah, that was a big deal. When was that? How come I can't... Uh, the the Wikipedia for NES... I just got to look. NES Wikipedia. <laughs> um, Nintendo came out in 83 in Japan. Okay. And then... When did it come out in... in uh, 85 in the US. Yeah. Huh. So... Well, actually, this is weird. It says... Later released in New York City in 1985. <laughs> and then Europe, huh. 86 and 87, and Australia, 87. Wow, 87. And huh. in Brazil, it wasn't officially released until 1993. Wow. Huh. I, I'm sorry, Brazil. I had no idea. Yeah. That's crazy. Anyway, um, as you can yeah. see, we're already kind of getting into it. This is, yeah, uh, this is fun to talk about old tech stuff. It is. I'm sure this will bring up a lot of memories for other people too. But it's yeah, it's interesting thinking back on it. I mean, I don't exactly know what year it was I got interested in that stuff. I mean, my I know my dad. So he was a 
he was a magazine editor, and so he always had to have desktop publishing software. Oh yeah. And I know he he had brought home a one of the black and white Macintoshes, the sing, you know, the tiny little ones that you could carry. Oh yeah, yeah, with um, a little little screen. A little screen. He brought that home a few times, um, just and we played with it. I would go to his office sometimes and just play on that thing, and there wasn't even that much to do. It was like a paint, a little paint program maybe, and a couple of games. Yeah. What was um, cool I mean, about that one was, though is that yeah. it, that one had a mouse, didn't it? It did, yeah. So that that made it unique because um, all the other computers that had come out to that point, like the personal computers, didn't have didn't have a mouse. We yeah. used to play. This is a, such a silly game, but remember it the there was a screensaver on uh-huh. that original Mac, but you could still move the mouse around. There was a, a screensaver where it was like a rotating kind of star spiral thing. <laughs> uh, I'll see if I can find it. But we used to play, the game we used to play is that we'd put our mouse on the screensaver and we would just try to move the mouse around and avoid that swirling <laughs> thing on the screen because <laughs> there's no other games on it. Oh, uh, simple, simple pleasures. Yeah, but it, it was so, it was so, um, like there was nothing like it. So yeah. you, you kind of had to come up with your, your own fun, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't, Absolutely. I can't, I can't find a video or a picture of it, but I, I distinctly remember going to my friend Joshua's house and they had a Mac and, and they, yeah, and we were just, they're like, oh, we can play this game where we just avoid the, <laughs> avoid the swirling thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, in school, elementary school, there was a lot of, uh, Apple twos, Apple two E's with some. Uh, you know, uh, what is it? The well, there Oregon were, Trail. There was that Turtle Basic program. Do you remember that where you had to logo, where you had to make the turtle, yeah, um, move around. Right. Here's here's what's interesting. So that was what. So I would have been in grade one in like eighty. How do ages even work? Eighty seven, eighty eight, and. We had every week, we had computer class. I think we had computer class like two or three times a week. There was hmm. like a computer lab. Yeah. Uh, and it had posters, like um, all the things you weren't allowed to do around computers. Like you were never allowed to drink uh, a soda around, <laughs> right. around your computer. It was like a big deal. Like don't even bring a soda next to a computer. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we went to computer lab and we programmed in logo like we were learning how huh. this machine worked and i remember that there was a shift when you know like apple like owned the education system back then like apple was in every school yeah. and then windows like when i transitioned into junior high high school it was all about windows and there was no more programming class after that it was just word processing excel that kind of stuff yeah, I never, I never had the programming classes growing up. I mean, I, for one, I think, yeah, it was more about um, learning how to type, pro- like word processing, learning how to type. I don't think our teachers knew how to program either. So, like, they, I mean, they barely, they barely knew computers. I think so. A lot of us would just screw around and we'd learn faster than they would, and we'd just be like doing stupid things and like sending messages to people across the network. It was like a really old network. They, like on uh, the Apple two E's or on the windows machines? N- no, it was windows or maybe I think we had, I know what we had a computer lab that was just DOS for a while. Okay. So you, you must've been, cause I, for a while, at least growing up in Alberta in the eighties, every school just had Apple. And then, okay. The library got one Macintosh that everyone could go and use, but uh-huh. the computer lab still had Apple IIs. And then uh, there was that crazy multimedia Macintosh that had uh, an optical, like a CD-ROM drive. Yep. And um, that was a big deal. Like everyone was like going crazy over multimedia. Like multimedia was a keyword that everyone knew. 
Yes, it was. Uh, with CD-ROMs and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I had definitely had classes in middle school, high school. Um, but I didn't, I didn't have a personal computer at home until like 90, maybe 1990, 91. Okay, and what was that? What was and your that, first computer at home? It was a 486, actually. So we, <laughs> I know, my, my dad, my dad uh, went all in on a compu ad. I had to look up the history of that company. They were like the biggest PC clone maker in Austin, Texas until Dell took over. Compu ad? Compu ad. What the heck? Okay, I got to look these up. Yeah, it was like, you know, one of the early PC clone makers. Just like a gray. It was a, just a beige box with a beige monitor. Yeah. I'm looking to see if I can find any photos of CompuAd computers. I tried to find them too. I couldn't. Oh, here's like a really old one on eBay. Should we buy this for you? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, fans. John wants us to buy <laughs> this computer. <laughs> uh, it's, it's only $99. Nice. It powers on. That, cool. <laughs> that's it. Here, I'm going to send this to you in chat. I found an ad for one. Compu ad, except no limits. Yes, except no limits. Oh. So did it have, because this one here has the, the five and a, was, it was five and a quarter, right? Floppy yeah, we drive? had, I think, I think we had the five and a quarter and the, and the three and a half. Wow. It, I remember it had a 120 megabyte hard drive. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty good that's, for the time. Yeah. I think it was four megabytes of RAM, I believe. Wow! What, no, did your dad no, buy no this CD for ROM. ten thousand dollars? <laughs> I don't remember. It was. I think. I think he recently. I think I was back home a while ago. I think we found the bill for it, like the original paper receipt that oh he bought at God. some. Store. And it was. It was quite a bit. I mean, it was. You know, looking back on it, it yeah. was a big investment. Yeah. <laughs> Could you, it, it's almost like if you could have told the parents back then, like, you know what, just w like wait five years and <laughs> yeah. your money's going to go so much further. Uh, I mean, you know, they, they needed it too. My dad did a lot of work at home and taxes and all that stuff. Um, I think I just found your computer. Look at this one I just have. sent to you in, in uh, Slack. It has the three and a half and the five and a quarter. Yeah, it looks... That looks pretty similar. It didn't have a turbo button, though. Oh, the turbo button. <laughs> yeah, that looks... That's the logo. Um, and then we later on, we added a CD-ROM and like a sound card to it so we could play games. Oh, yeah. That was that was another thing. Like our first like real family computer... Well, we had a Tandy 1000. Well, before that, we had a VIC-20. Then we had a Tandy 1000. But our first one that I got really excited about was our 386. And okay. That one you could, um, we bought the sound card and yep. that was like, it was always like an add on, like, do you want the sound card? Yeah. And I was like, oh, can we please get that? Cause they had this little demo and they were showing us like, you can hook up a keyboard to it and play MIDI, MIDI, MIDI music. Yeah. Like, and, uh -huh. um, I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. So I begged yeah, it was, for it. It was great. I mean, sound card was a big deal. And so you you got the sound card, no CD ROM drive though. No, we got it was a CD ROM sound card combo with speakers. So we could play games with you know better sound effects. I mean we had, came with like what an encyclopedia on CD ROM. You could watch videos, find like the first like color video you could watch on a computer. <laughs> it was like horrible resolution. Yeah. I remember when um Microsoft Encarta came out. It was uh, yeah. uh, the encyclopedia on CD-ROM. Where has the enthusiasm for encyclopedias gone? Uh, Wikipedia I mean, kind of killed it. I think it did. But the thing is, so like, first of all, a lot of families used to invest in the actual books, right? Like you would have yeah. the whole uh, Time, Time Warner encyclopedia or something. Yeah, you'd have a wall of... A wall of encyclopedias. Yeah, you would show it to your guests. Yeah. They would walk in the house. You would say, look at this. We have the full encyclopedia, A through <laughs> Z. And then Encarta came out and the big sale, I mean, the big selling feature was, this is this entire thing all on this one disc. 
Yeah. But the cool part about it is you could watch these little postage stamp videos of like a killer whale. Yeah, or like a, a rocket launch. Rocket launch. That. Um, oh, well, the, yeah, the, the, the moon landing was on there. Yeah. And it would be like, it was, it was kind of a family event, at least in our house. Like we'd be like, whoa, yeah. everyone gather around. We're going to look at Microsoft at and this, Carta. At a two inch video. Yeah. <laughs> but it seems so crazy. <laughs> I know. Um, what about games? What games did you play on your original machine? Um, man, I forget what we started out with. Uh, but you know, the, I guess, I guess up until then we didn't have a computer. So 486 was already, there was already quite a bit out that it could play. So oh yeah, a lot, a lot of that shareware stuff you'd get, you know, you get like a disc in a magazine or whatever. Did you, did you uh, have a modem with that machine? I, I, I missed that. We did. It came with a modem. Uh, we didn't use it for a while cause there's really nothing we could do with it. Um, Although I don't remember when AOL. I mean, there was there was like CompuServe and AOL and stuff, but we didn't hook into that for a while. So yeah. this modem just sat there. We didn't even use it. And then, oh, what a shame! I think my bro- my brother and I finally were like, let's try this out. Got a AOL demo disc and signed up. We I think we downloaded shareware games through that. Yeah. So that's how I got them because I was a country kid. Yeah. And so I couldn't get to town. Now we did have like our town was like five thousand people, uh-huh. and we did have a Radio Shack that would sell boxed software. Okay. And I remember like saving up, and it was, it was kind of like I wasn't allowed to have a Nintendo, and so the only games I could play were on this computer. And I remember sometimes I would save up like a lot of money, like way more than you would pay for a console game, on my computer, and. Often, like you'd take it home and you'd find out that it was like incompatible, wouldn't work with your <laughs> hardware. <laughs> you didn't have enough memory. Yeah, Did, didn't have enough memory, or sometimes it was just like this sound card you have is not supported, <laughs> or this video card you have is not supported, and you'd yeah. be like super disappointed. Yeah, but when um, Shareware yeah, came we- around, that was crazy because then, as a kid out in the country, I could dial up these BBSs and they would have a these bulletin board services. So this is pre-internet and they would have a download section where you could, you know, download all sorts of stuff. Um, But one of the things you could download were games and stuff. And yeah, the share were like basically demo versions of these games, like the first level. And then you could, you could mail, you could like mail a check to the company and they'd send you the full version, I think. Yeah. 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 I, so a lot. A lot. Yeah. I actually did that with um, with Commander Keen. Okay. I've used that as an example actually for in my my talks about SaaS software because mm-hmm. I think that's crazy that we've lost some of that. We've had this model forever since the 80s and 90s, where you would download the first level for free, and if you liked it, you would write a check and send it to them, and then they would mail you back a license key, and then you yeah, would input right. in the license key, and then it would open up the whole game. Yeah. And, you know, back then, they were probably able to make really good money, actually. I think they did. I think they made a lot of money for a while. Well, if kids like... I mean, I was in a farm town in Stony Plain, Alberta, and I was... I did it. Right. Yeah, I mean, I I was in the similar town. We, you know, there was a mall like twenty thirty minutes away, but we didn't go there that often. Yeah. Oh, were you kind of out in the country too, like on an acreage? Yeah. Or? Yeah, it was like a eight thousand person town. Okay. Yeah. So similar, similar sized towns. Similar, yeah, it was similar. So, like, you know, it, yeah, there's just a lot there. Uh, games. I mean, yeah, Apogee was the big shareware company at that point. They did, you know, Commander Keen and Wolfenstein and yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, I think did, they, what did your parents well, think about Wolfenstein? Uh, <laughs> you know what? My dad actually got into games as well. Like he started playing Wolfenstein. We got him into Doom. He played Quake. Oh my god! He played Half Life and Half Life Two. Like he he got into it. So and it's just like a thing he enjoyed to do. You know, like in the winter when he couldn't work outside. So you had like the ideal setup at home. Yeah, it was it was good. 
I just uh, remember my parents coming in and going, "What is this? Like, there's all these yeah. Nazis running around, and You're like, but it's just not. It's Nazis. It's fine. You're killing Nazis." <laughs> And it, but it was, and it was so <laughs> violent, like it was like it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. Did you ever get the? Did you ever buy the the mod? Like not not buy, but did you ever download the mods where you would shoot Barney? That was a big one. Yeah, I remember that for Doom. I think. <laughs> no, well for Wolfenstein too. That was the first oh, time was I the saw first it. One? Okay. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot like that. Did so you, yeah, we played those. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What's that? No, we played. Yeah, played those games. Um, Doom, I remember we did, uh, we would, my friends and I would dial up each, you could like dial each other's modem directly. Oh, yeah. And, and play cooperatively. That. Um, which, which was super fun, although you couldn't really talk to each other. You, you could chat with people. That's send right. Send a message and talk, so you'd be like playing together. The first time I ever did that was Duke Nukem 3D. Yeah. And I remember it took us forever to get it set up. Uh-huh. Like we were like calling back and forth and then one of our moms would pick up the phone and it would ruin everything. Yeah, that and, happened. <laughs> and finally we'd like we like screamed at the family enough like, "Dude, pick up the phone." And like, "Okay, I'll call you. Okay, okay." And then you know the the modem's negotiating. And yeah. then finally they like locked in and we're like, "Okay, we got it." And it was like it worked and I just remember playing for the first time and kids today are going to be like, this is, this is not a big deal. But I remember seeing my friend Greg, I was like Duke Nukem. And I think there's a level where you're out in the desert or something. And I was high up and I saw him run in front of me. Yeah. And it was actually really um, like the, the latency was pretty good. And he ran in front of me and I, I was just shooting him from up top <laughs> and think, thinking, this is crazy. Like we're two country kids yeah, and we're able to do this. Like, and it, I couldn't believe how well it worked. Yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing once, it, once you got it to work. And then, you know, you do the like the network parties of people and you'd have four people playing at the same time. You'd be yeah. in the same room. Were you? Did you ever do that? Bring your bring your tower over. I to did. A, no, I did. Yeah, yeah. I, we had. I had friends. My brother had friends come over and play. Uh, you know, Warcraft and Doom and stuff. And I actually went. <laughs> I don't know what year this was. Middle school, high school, probably middle school. There was a Doom tournament at the local one of the local computer shops. No way. And I went to it, and you know, I didn't. Everyone else who was really good was playing with like keyboard and mouse, you know? Yeah. Because it's way easier. I had like this game pad. <laughs> but I won a round <laughs> and the local, one of the local radio stations like interviewed me. It was like the, the alternative rock station. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was, it was hilarious. And then like, you know, you make it to the next round and I got absolutely crushed. But what town is this in? Uh, it was, that was in Lansing, East Lansing, Michigan. Okay, anyone so in, that, in Lansing that can find that video, I will pay anything. No, oh, well, it was, it was a radio. It wasn't a video. Okay, audio. I was on the radio. I want, I want Prop, young John Buddha. God, it probably doesn't exist, but that'd be amazing if it did. <laughs> I pro- it's probably somewhere. Uh, maybe. So, that was, yeah, that was, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's so great. But, and, and actually, yeah. a little bit of a foreshadowing, if you think about it, because now esports is like a big thing. Yeah, yeah, that was not. There was not a big crowd. There were no sponsors, except the local computer store. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't remember what the what the gifts were that you could win. It was like probably a sound card or like a. Oh man. Uh, something like that. That would have been so fun. Uh, yeah, I mean those. Yeah, those. So those were the early games. I mean, there was certainly some before that, like. You know, like I think you mentioned King's Quest and Police Quest and Space Quest. Yeah, and that whole Sierra. And, the adventure, yeah. And again, actually, to be honest, I think me getting interested in business started around this time because I could see that as a young kid, a few things were happening. One, um, some BBSs were subscription-based, so to yeah. dial up. You, you, there was a member only number. So there was a free number that was usually busy, but you could call this other number. If you paid, you got access to this 
private number and then you would almost get access all the time. And I remember paying for this. Like, I want to be able to access these BBSs. And so I begged my parents and they, you know, gave their credit card on onto yeah. this BBS. And um, so I could see business was happening. And then early on, I uh, there were some BBSs that asked me to do some ANSI art for them. Okay. And they were willing to pay me. So that I was like getting like little, and it might've just been credits like for on the bulletin board. But I remember thinking like, oh, I just got hired as this 12 year old kid to <laughs> make art for this bulletin board. Yeah. And there's, there's like business happening here. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. We didn't, I guess we didn't really talk about the BBS stuff yet, but yeah, I mean, that was, that was a, a really interesting time. I actually miss it quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, pre pre internet. Although I think a lot of them, a lot of those BBSs could connect to Usenet, so you could actually like read. They would, I think, daily they would download like payloads of Usenet, so you could read Usenet messages across the internet and then post, and then they would actually send those up to like the main whatever servers, wherever those live. Probably a university, I would guess. But yeah, Fidonet mostly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, mostly I, my brother and I played games. And signed it. We would sign in and play games like Legend of the Red Dragon. Oh yeah. And there was trade wars where you'd have like a, it was like some interplanetary like space game where you would be trading and you'd have to like collect resources and yeah, and you'd be playing against other. So it was like a massively multiplayer game. You'd be playing against other people. I think there's actually a big community right now of Telnet BBSs. Huh. Where you can just yeah, Telnet BBS guide. You can just from you know if from uh, your terminal you can go onto these bulletin boards and um, play a lot of those old games and stuff. Huh. Yeah. So if I Telnet here, let's see what happens here. I'm gonna try this live. Telnet. Oh wait. Do I have this? Let me see what this does. Uh, wow. Oh, I don't have... I might have to install... You might have to install something. Anyway, there's all sorts of bulletin boards, and, and they through Terminal, they're still able to um, run, you know, like show the ANSI art and all that yeah. stuff. So That's awesome. And those games, too. Like, I remember... Cause I, I, did you ever try to run your own bulletin board? Uh, I might, I pro I'm sure I installed the software, but like I could, you know, one phone line, what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I did too. But the, <laughs> to buy like those door games cost money. And so these early programmers were figuring out, you know, it, this is why one of the reasons I find it funny that um, you know, like this conference talk I give called Marketing for Developers. The reason I give it is a lot of developers are intimidated by marketing. Mm -hmm. But I think if you go back into the history, these folks were like badass business people. Um, Justin Bellavita was is talking about the Sierra Adventure Games, which we were talking about. And that company has a fascinating story. Like they were a huge business and not very big, like kind of small potatoes, a husband and a wife. Yeah. Both were programming and, but they were also incredible marketers, incredible business people. <laughs> I think eventually it all came crashing down. The story, that's like a documentary I would love to see uh, is the, the Sierra story. The, <laughs> the, uh, I think it was Ken Williams. Ken Williams, or I can't remember. Yeah, the yeah, the Will something Williams. Yeah, that sounds. Roberta familiar. Williams was the wife. Yeah. Anyway, I I just think that's fascinating that all of that stuff was going on early on, and, and like without and without the internet, like I just I mean these strike. people are doing. With, yeah, these people are doing this with it in isolation to some extent. Yeah. I mean, it's you know you have BBSs and there was AOL, but like. Man, I, uh, yeah, it's just a, such a, it was such a small, 
Like it felt so much smaller back then. It's oh, like this, yeah. People who were on these systems like knew each other. It was smaller. You could like it, it was like an actual community. Yeah. Um, and they were started like Sierra Online. I'm I'm just looking at this now. Sierra Online was an online a, a place to play games like your Sierra games online. I think I can't remember how. Right. I never had enough money to sign up for that one. No. But yeah, that 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 part is really fascinating to me. And uh, I think it is when I started thinking like, oh, you can make money kind of doing computer stuff and web stuff. That, that would actually, yeah. be, that's a good question. What was the first time you made money because of computer stuff? Uh, it's, it was probably, I probably went to my dad's office and like fixed some stuff or mm-hmm. like got some viruses off a computer or fixed a printer or hooked a modem up. I was probably like 13, maybe. Can we stop and just comment about how crazy is this? Yeah. <laughs> in, in the 90s, this was a common occurrence. Yeah. Is, you know, dad would be at the office and and they'd go, come on, Frank, these dang computers aren't working. <laughs> and then Frank would go, well, my son seems to be pretty into computers. And yeah. and they'd be like, "Well, bring them in, Frank. We got to get this fixed." And then some, you know, me, I've got like yeah. glasses and a mullet and braces and headgear, and I'd come in and and they'd be like, "Okay, kid, we need we need you to network all these machines." Yeah, and I would we, just, we're gonna tr- we're gonna trust you. Like what? <laughs> yeah, and it was and it was like the first step for me. Anyway, my dad was a principal. And so they brought me to the office and I'm, they want me to network all these machines. But the first step was I met the, I, the, the IT guy who, yeah. whose office was literally in the broom closet. Oh, no. <laughs> and, so, and there's just like disks everywhere and cables. And he's like, okay, kid. He just kid. works in the dark. <laughs> just, oh. And he's like, have you, ever, have you ever networked with Windows NT before? I'm like, uh, no, I, I I could probably figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> and he literally just left me in the computer lab for like hours and I just figured it out somehow. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know what, it, I don't know what it was about that. We just had, I could just fiddle with that stuff forever until it worked. Like I'm editing like configuration files to get more memory to play a game or like yeah. flipping switches on a modem to get it to work right. Yeah. To opening the computer up and replacing a part or like, you know, I, I, I think I fried a couple computers. <laughs> I remember distinctly, I remember one time I lost everything on my home computer hard drive. Oh no. Including all of, you know, parents' financial stuff and just like, <laughs> I was just like, oh no, <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> I have a lot uh, of fond memories back from back then, but I also do have memories like that where it was like they were just so unstable and you could lose yeah. stuff so easy and yeah. it was just a nightmare to rebuild it. It was like floppy disks would just fail all the time. So see Justin Bellavita here in the in the chat saying, you know, these were good times. And I'm actually thinking because now, you know, I have a 15-year-old daughter and a 13-year-old son, and my son is super into computers. And I've hired him to do little things here and there, but I think the difference now is that so many of the parents are computer people. Like, we grew up with right. computers. But back then, you know, for the baby boomers, they had no idea what, like, yeah. they were going back to school to figure out these computers. Right, right. And the idea of hiring a 13-year-old kid to come in your office and fix them. That is crazy. It's like I, you probably had the same thing where you'd go to like a, a, friend's, oh, a yeah. friend's house or like a, a relatives over the holidays and they'd be like, oh, I hear you're into computers or like you're a computer guy. And you're like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> like, Yeah. Uh, and then they'd ask me to fix their computer. Yeah. That still happens to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially in a small town, I still get a lot of, uh, so what do you do? I'm like, well, I I work it, uh, with software and, and, and they're like, oh, you fix computers? 
I'm like, ah, yeah. I, I guess. Uh, I guess, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I, oh, and yeah, this is the other thing Justin's saying is that often, you know, like you would, you would have to teach your teachers, like stuff would break in the computer lab and you would be like, okay, uh, John, we need yeah. your help. <laughs> and we would, they would, they trusted us with so much if you think about it. But also like, we got away with a lot in oh. like computer labs. Like they didn't know what was going on. People were like <laughs> all sorts of pranks. And like, I remember one time some of my friends, they, they like, they like built a screen that looked like the login screen. <laughs> and so you would just type stuff in and it would just like, it would just say like formatting computer dot, dot, dot. And, oh, yeah. and the computer would just, the teacher would just freak out. I used to build those <laughs> with, uh, as auto exec bat files. Yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. Cause you could, you could get it to pause so you could like, yeah, you could, you know, hit yes or no. Do you want yeah. to delete your hard drive? Hit yes or no. And it doesn't and matter no, what. They- just, yeah. Yeah. We did the same thing. <laughs> now again, I think actually this is interesting looking at my 13 year old cause he, uh, his rebellion is that he does not like Apple stuff. Okay. And he's, really into Linux. And I think it's that same kind of thing. Like you want to hack around, you want to, you know, be able to mess around with what's going on. And the beauty, the beauty and the downside of PCs that you could do all that stuff. There was no security. It's not. Uh, Do you remember trumpet windsock? This is something else that Justin just mentioned. Trumpet windsock. Uh It enabled connectivity between computers and a network on the internet. And yeah, I use that all the time. Oh yeah, and in computer labs, like they would have no security. You would just yeah, you would just like yeah. okay, we're downloading this, and then you're chatting with your friends and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the uh, that's honestly why I got interested in computers though, because I could just you could screw around and and like you might be doing things that aren't necessarily you know they're they're like jokes sometimes and pranks, but like you're learning you're learning something. So you could, much. You could break things. You can just like, then you got to learn how to fix it. And it just sort of like, it, it made you less afraid of the machine. Yeah. Yeah. And also I think was very empowering. Because was, I, yeah. Because, like my wife didn't grow up with um, computers as much and at home. And it took her a long time to get comfortable. But for me, it's almost like there's not very many computer problems that I don't feel like I could tackle. Yeah. Like just because my whole life it's been like, okay, we got to do this. Right. All right. Um, yeah, I think that (laughs) this is, this is, I, I know we're like in full nostalgia mode, but I think there is something about this, about, um, you know, that time and being able to fiddle around and mess around and, it was it was also very it was a place that parents had not gone yeah and so it it kind of had this feeling of you know our parents do not understand this at all and we can explore this we can like we can mess around on this um i mean they're going to be upset if we delete their financials <laughs> but everything up to that line is basically yeah. okay and most, you know, for the most part, like my friends and I weren't doing anything nefarious. We weren't like, you know, uh, learning how to hack or like do anything like that. I, you know, I have no idea how to do that stuff. But like, you know, occasionally we'd like download pirated music and burn a CD and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> at school, which I, I, you know, made a few bucks doing that. But who hasn't? Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you want me to tell my, my almost got arrested story? <laughs> Absolutely. So, oh, let me cough first before I do this. Hold on, I'm going to turn off my mic. I'm going to get some water here. Okay, so L2600, do you remember this? Yeah. Uh-huh. 2600 was a magazine, a uh, Hacker's Quarterly magazine, but it was also a news group. So, before the web, there were news groups. Alt 2600, Alt Rec, Alt Picks, Alt Binaries. 
Uh-huh. Um, and these were places that you could go um, before Tim Berners Lee had invented the World Wide Web. It was this was the internet. It was telenetting, FTPing, and email and Usenet groups. And L twenty six hundred, um, you know, they this was they would have instructions on how to do stuff, like how to make a black box to get free phone calls from uh, pay phones, um, how to you know uh, how to make bombs and stuff like that. The, uh, the anarchist <laughs> cookbook, right? And so. I was trying to explain. Uh, I'm probably, I'm probably in grade nine at this point. I was trying to explain to my friends, um, and so the web hasn't hit yet. Grade nine, trying to explain to my friends what the internet is, and they're like, oh, "I don't get it." And I'm like, "Well, like you can get anything. Like I can get bomb plants." And they're like, "No, you can't." I'm like, "Yes, I can." And so I went home that day. I printed out some bomb plans for a pipe bomb on my dot matrix printer and came back the next day. And I was, I was just a kid that was trying to be cool. Like I was just like, look, yeah, like this is real. Like, look at this. And, um, Oh, you know what happened? This is not, that's not true. This is what happened. I printed it out. I biked over to my friend Greg's house and I showed him and he said, come on. He's like, leave this with me. So I left it with him. The next day, I was sick, so I didn't go to school. And my parents were at work, and I, rem- I got a phone call at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, picked up, and it was my friend Amanda, and she said, where are you? I said, oh, I've been homesick all day. And she said, you are in so much trouble. <laughs> the police have been here all day. I'm like, what? And she said, Greg brought those plans to school, gave them to Joey. Joey snuck into the teacher's lounge, made 300 photocopies, oh my and God. distributed it around the school. And then Dan went home, and Dan's mom, Dan had been into some, you know, doing some drugs and stuff. So Dan's mom was checking his bag, and pull, what does she pull out? But these bomb plans. Oh, no. Dan's mom calls the school. The school calls the police. Police swoop in, set up a classroom, and just start interviewing kids, bringing in kids, going, where did you get the plans? The police have never seen anything like this. <laughs> like they, oh, my God. They, they're like, they're like, what is going on in this town? <laughs> they're like, what the heck? Like, and uh, Amanda said, I don't know if anyone ratted you out because they have literally had every kid in there. They all come out crying. And I'm like, oh my God. And I was, I packed my bag. Like I just packed my bag and I was just waiting to hear police sirens come. And I was like, just going to book it into the forest behind my house. I was a kid. I was scared. Yeah. I mean, what, oh, man, if that happened these days, like you'd be screwed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. By the way, but back then you're probably like, "Wow, this thing, this is a power. This is powerful." I was like, "This is crazy," and then um, it just kind of died down. Like nobody ratted me out, and I mean, to be fair, like these pipe bombs were probably not hugely destructive. I know I heard some kids made them, and they did blow up a little bit. Like if you ever played with gunpowder and you were a kid, it's probably the equivalent of yeah. I mean, not safe. But um, anyway, in the newspaper, two weeks later, the local, the local newspaper, there was an article about how these bomb plans had gone around and oh police were worried about it. And I was like, oh, my God, like, what have I done? That's incredible. So, yeah, that is that was <laughs> that's my, that's my story of, of being bad on the early Internet. That's a good story. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> and it was just like, it was so new. Like that would have been 91 probably. And then, yep. um, the, the web came out, mosaic came out in 93 and then it was all about, about the web. Yeah. Um, <laughs> people are just commenting on the, that story. I think a lot of people, 
messed around with the anarchist cookbook. That was like, Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I, I heard about it. I didn't ever, I don't think I ever downloaded it, but yeah, I certainly heard about it. Yeah. What about uh, early websites? What was early web? Oh man. Did you make any websites? I made some websites. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know when I finally got web access. It was, I mean, obviously it was first through AOL. Um, like they had their walled garden, but then they eventually had a web browser that you could get to the internet from. Yeah, yeah. So, you that... know, I, just, I, I just kept signing up for like trials and demos, <laughs> just getting free hours. Wow, see, because uh, we, we paid for CompuServe and um, that was, you, you only had X number of hours you could use per month. Yeah, right, right. And I remember- I mean, have, Yeah, I eventually paid, but- That was so frustrating. It was. Because my parents just wanted to check their email. They didn't understand what was going on. And oh, yeah. like, how did you burn through 29 hours? Like, we have 30 hours. You burn through 29 hours. And it's like one week into the month, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, see, they didn't even understand. Like, there's because there's that whole menu of everything you could access. Yeah. And Usenet Groups is one of them. Uh, and then they had their own like games and whatever uh, classifieds. Mm-hmm. But then there was like one little icon that said like the web or whatever, and you would click yeah. on that, and then you were out into this whole crazy world. I know. I mean, it uh, early websites. Um, a lot of them were gaming websites. Like there were you know websites about news news for games and. Uh, I, God, I don't even remember. I mean, you, you would just like surf the web and end up in weird places. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and especially back then, there was some, there were some weird, weird sites. Yeah. Um, but what was the first site you made? You think it was a gaming website, like for? Oh no! Well, no. I mean, that was some of the first I went to. I think I probably tried to start like a fan site for Doom or something. I don't know, something like that. Um. Oh, Doom had but some then, amazing animated GIFs back then, though. Yeah. Like, there's a whole animated GIF pack that was all from you Doom. Could, you could trade, like, levels and levels and maps people made. Yeah. Say, level editors. Um, but, yeah, I... GeoCities uh, or Angel Fire? Oh, uh, let's see. I think I did GeoCities, but I also... This is, the, this is the cool thing. So, I got, through my high school... Or like freshman year, we got, I somehow got dial-up access. I think you could just like apply for it, but no one else did. Okay. So I had like an email address that was like, you know, mason.k12.mi.us was the domain name, which was <laughs> really hard to type. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you could sign up for dial-up access and you'd get access to dial into uh somewhere in East Lansing, Michigan, which was like, you know, 20 miles away, but it was the same area code. And it was a, this partnership through Michigan State University. So they had you, they had a, these banks of modems you could dial into, and they had like a, like a T3 connection to the internet. So it was like amazing. Yeah. And I got it for free, and it was unlimited. Like it wasn't, it, it wasn't like you're paying. It wasn't, they didn't give you a certain amount of hours a month. Um. So that would have been huge. So I could also, I also had an FTP, I also had FTP access where you could dump HTML files and have your own website. Okay. So I would just have these websites like in subfolders on this really random, random domain name. Um, and I ended up, I think the first big one I made was a, a website for my high school swim team. Okay that I was on and I was like, you know, it was like, who's on the team? What are the records? Yeah. What were the results of the meets? We had some pictures and stuff. Um, what year would have that been? That was probably like uh, 95 or 96. Do you still have a copy of that? I, I don't, I, for, there was a long time where you could search on Google for it and it would show up. Really? I don't know if like maybe it's in the archive.org or the Wayback Machine or something, but oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look it up. It was you know, it was tables, tables, and a bunch of cut up images to form like menus. It wasn't. I mean, there was no CSS at that point even. So yeah, um, that but that's how I learned. You know, that's how I learned HTML. I just like 
looked at other websites and opened the source code. Yeah. I'm sure I, I, don't, I may have had a book, an early book. Um, I don't. Again. I'm trying to think like when I even started doing that. I mean, another benefit of the web, at least for me, is I had tried programming before. I asked for a copy of Turbo Pascal for my 12th birthday or something like that <laughs> and tried like to figure it out on my own. And I just couldn't as a kid, like, and it, there was, I mean, there was resources on Usenet, but it was just re- way harder than it is now to find any sort of community or instruction online. Yeah. And I remember just being like, okay, I can't, I can't figure this out. It's just too difficult. And the web comes along and almost instantly, I mean, you could download those HTML files and look inside of them in any text editor and be like, oh, I can figure this out. Mm -hmm. And it was all about, I was always really into writing and publishing. And so the idea that with these really, this really simple markup, you could create something and put it online, that... That was, that just blew my mind. Yeah. And it was, you know, I, really not programming per se, but it was, you're building something from scratch. You get immediate feedback. Other people can see it. Like it was. Yeah, exactly. It, and it, for me, it had the same, um, it gave me the same kind of sense of um, fulfillment that I had with the stuff I'd really enjoyed making with computers before. And right. so, you know, I always really liked HyperCard and the the web felt like that. Like, oh, I can link pages to pages to pages and create interactivity and, you know, get people, you know, I, and I can put this all on the web and people can use it. And uh, I had a guest book. I had a snowboarding website and I had a guest book. Yeah. And the guest book, like a guest book was just, you, you would show up and you would say, hey, it's, you know, it's Anita from Germany. Uh, I really like snowboarding too. And that, that was what it was. <laughs> but it was, right. back then, it was just exciting to meet anyone else that was on the internet that had the same interest as you and somehow had found your thing. Yeah. There was no Google. No. There was Yahoo. I think it came along until 99, I think. Yahoo, there was just a couple other ones. Alta Vista. Yeah. Ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. I, I can't believe GeoCities, because uh, Yahoo bought GeoCities for a billion or something and, <laughs> um, and shut it down. But if you go to geocities.com, it's still, re, it's still forwards to Yahoo hosting. Huh. And I think that's just a travesty of that's just a travesty. Like there's there's folks that have tried to rehost old GeoCities content. I think if you go to Ooh Cities, you okay. can like find your it's O O yeah, O O Cities. You can find maybe if you're lucky your old GeoCities website. But shame on you, Yahoo. Like shame I mean, on it's you. Like, it's like a time capsule of the internet. The, the the Space Jam like, website hasn't changed since '92 yeah. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, and like Yahoo, you're you're basically done as a company. Just d- make Geo restore GeoCities to its former glory. People would probably pay. I would pay if I could unlock like I'm. They probably don't have it anymore. They've. Pr- I think that was the reason behind Ooh Cities is that Yahoo started deleting that stuff, and. Um, I just think it's a shame. And so U- Ooh Cities or whatever was like, oh, we got to get this before they delete it all. And so they were able to like get some of the hard drives or something. I don't know how it happened, but um, hmm. I think that's just a shame that <laughs> Yahoo's holding on to that. Such an important piece of internet history. Yeah, they have it somewhere, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, in October 2009, we archived our olden cities of the web. Because I noticed that some of my sites are here, but some of mine are not here. And yeah, I just think that that's silly. Like, why not? 
why not? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so Ian in the chat is asking if anyone remembers Homestead. I wasn't a Homestead. There's a Homestead person. There was like homestead. you were at like either like oh. Angel Fire or yeah Homestead, GeoCities. There's a couple places to. I'm sure. Yeah, there were a few more. Man. Uh. Yeah. So I mean, I. I kept doing that stuff throughout high school. Like I would, you know, build websites and things like that. I think I, I'm sure I helped some other people build websites for random things, but I never really, um, oh man, I don't, I don't think I did. Cause I, because at that point, like I still didn't know, I, I didn't know how to put a website on the internet with like a custom domain name. It was just like, I had a folder on a, FTP site and you could go to it but it wasn't like a domain I think I didn't that part I didn't know about yet really. yeah get into that oh, so like I would build I would build websites throughout high school but I never really I never really thought of it as like a thing I was gonna do yeah like I didn't really I went to college and like I didn't I had no idea I didn't know what I was gonna do yeah you didn't think you were gonna I, I mean, get into I, web stuff not really I mean I, I was obviously I knew I was interested in computers and loved building websites, um, but I didn't really even at that point. I didn't really know how to program. I mean, I, I I wasn't programming logic in any of this stuff. Really, it was like it was more design focused. Really, it was like yeah. Got my I had my pirated copy of Photoshop, which I'm sure I'd like everyone my age. Designers have that's how they got started. Like if you couldn't pirate Photoshop, you would. <laughs> You're done. So many, so many people would not be designers today. Yet another thing, another characteristic of our generation that feels like this next generation is maybe missing. Yeah. Because that, that's a yeah. That, it, it's true though. Like if if pirating is harder now than it was back then, and if you and you're right, like you ask any designer, hey, so did you pirate Photoshop? It's like. Uh, yeah. Like how else were we going to do it? It was like a thousand dollars. Why? How could you afford that? Mm -hmm. And there were no other, there weren't free alternatives. I mean, there are now like you can, I think now there's more tools available that are free or cheap Yeah, like on the app store, iPad apps or whatever. But like that was the only option and it was hundreds of dollars. Yeah. I was and a fireworks to, guy. I wasn't a Photoshop guy. Okay. But I, but like all you wanted to do was like make a dumb logo with, and like emboss it or put some, <laughs> put some drop shadow in it. That's it. Heavy on the drop shadow <laughs> title. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I still have my copy. This is, I've mentioned this multiple times, but I still have my copy of Adobe Fireworks CS5 that I still use. Yeah. They don't really make it anymore. Do they? They, I think they do, but I just haven't, I just haven't wanted to pay a subscription to Adobe. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just, I keep holding on to this old copy of CS5. It's, yeah. it's pretty haggard now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I never really, I never really, I never saw it as a career really. I mean, that was like, you know, ended high school at the beginning of the end of the dot com boom. Yeah. And went to school in the middle of it and ended up studying computer science, but like, the stuff I was learning in class was programming, but it wasn't web, and I would be doing that after hours. Yeah, I'd just be learning, learning PHP and the web like on the side, and that like we didn't learn databases and SQL in class ever. Crazy. So that was all just like me, like buying a couple books, like using whatever Google had at that point. There was no Stack Overflow. There was just like you kind of hack the stuff together and make it work. Yeah. Keep keep going from there and learn CSS. Finally, once that got a little bit a little bit better. Yeah, it's weird. Like I had um, here. I'll put my I'm gonna put my business card. This must have been from. Clearly, I was into business from a, an early age. But in retrospect, I wish I'd gone and done some programming. But my company was called Media Head Productions. Nice and. I started this in college. 
So my first year of college, I worked as a bellboy. And my uh, second year of college, I got a business loan and uh, started this company. Here it is for you folks <laughs> watching live. Oh, and look at this. Here's my, nice. look at my original ad. Put your business online. Web page nice. hosting. At some point, I was like, I got I to gotta save all this stuff. Lightning fast T3 connection. Oh, yeah. Look at this. What That's were my prices? Awesome. $250 per month. That was pretty good money. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if I ever sold any of those. You know what? I, I did this some similar stuff where you're like managing other people's websites and hosting them, and it was a pain in the ass. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I sold. I had one customer that paid three hundred and fifty dollars per month. I th that was my dad's work, and then <laughs> I had a few other customers that I put on the basic package, but they paid me like not one hundred and fifty. It was like way less. Yeah, but yeah, this is funny. Yeah, yeah. I um, yeah, I I did some similar stuff like that. Like I started a company out of after college because it was two thousand three. There was no opportunity. Like that was not a good time to start working in, as a web designer. Oh yeah, that's the other. Th yeah, like that's. There's some other stuff going on at the time. Yeah, I mean, there was the the, the web. Like, I don't think the web and the internet and like dot com stuff had really recovered yet, and no one really trusted it necessarily. Yeah. It was starting to. Um, the web standards movement had been starting. Um, and so I would just like go around to local businesses and like see if they would pay me, you know, whatever they could to build a website. Yeah. Um, so I was like running my own business out of college, making no money, like s scrapping by, but it was, I, it was a great learning. So like I'd, I'd have to go meet with clients and like put on my khakis and my button down shirt, <laughs> try to impress them. I'm like a young kid. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Hired an accountant to do my taxes. Wow. Yeah. We haven't even hired an accountant yet for this. <laughs> for I know. <laughs> you were better back then than you are now. I know. Yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting time. I, I, I sometimes I feel like I didn't do enough. Like I could have bought so many domain names back yeah. then. And I remember at the time... Like clearly, I was advertising for other people to buy domain names. But if you look at like my website was at incenter.net slash media HD. <laughs> so I, I didn't yeah. even have a domain name for my own business because they were expensive. They were. I forget. I bought one. This was 2003. Yeah. I think it was called creativelyaware.com. Creatively. <laughs> really didn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> Creatively aware. Hello. Like, what does that mean? Are you creatively aware? Join me as I take you on a journey into your creativity. Close your eyes. <laughs> Do you still have that? No, I don't have the domain. I better see where that, hopefully that doesn't... It doesn't go anywhere. I mean, I could scoop it back up. Creativelyaware.com. Dude, we got to get that, man. Oh, wait, that, that might be on the web archive. That might be on the web archive. Oh, man. People are going to find... There's definitely some early websites of mine that I do not want people, people to find. I'm afraid to look at this. <laughs> By the way, Wayback Machine, I've donated some money to them in the past. I should donate some more. What they do is a big deal. Yeah. Like, the fact that this is a thing and you can go back so far and... Okay, I'm, yeah, see to, yeah. I'm seeing some results oh, here. Shit, you're right. <laughs> Creatively, oh, wow. This was actually, this was a good looking site, man. How do I use this website? Is this, so this is yours, like the blue with the eyeball? Yeah, that's oh, mine. Oh my gosh. Now you must have built Specializing this Specializing in, in website design. <laughs> this is a really nice looking site. You were good at design back then. Yeah. Now for I'm sure. Grips stuff from other people. 
Oh, yeah, this is when I was living in Miami. Oh, and this is built with divs. Like, this isn't even a table layout. Yeah, this was, uh, yeah, this was, like, I got I got big into it with the web standard stuff. Yeah, this this looks good. So this was, like, your, your web hosting company. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Can I run Flash on this? This what is if- crazy. My, my phone number that's on here is still my phone number. <laughs> oh, boy. It's like my first cell phone. I just never changed my number. By the way, I just loaded Adobe Flash and that animation, it like websites come in from the left. So good. Oh, what? Wait, where? Um, I went to, um, I went oh, to portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, this is uh, definitely going uh, uh, in the show notes. <laughs> this is incredible. I haven't thought about this in so long. Oh, it's amazing. What I, it's That's, it's actually really well designed though. Like it still works. Yeah. It How still looks possible? good. Like there is there is no shame in this site here. This is this huh. is a good looking website. And you see the logo embossed drop shadow? Yeah. You but did you ha- you must have hand drawn that. It's got kind of a 8-bit look. Uh yeah, I'm not sure what I did. I'm just checking. I wanted to see if you had any prices listed here. I want to this see. This is like a. I don't think I did. This is, is like a lifetime ago. To see if your prices were lower than mine. I don't think I had prices on there. <laughs> oh, oh man, that wow. that is just incredible. That that's <laughs> worth the whole show right there, just to see this old website. <sighs> Oh, God, I haven't thought about that in years. That's amazing. Did you see? I just posted in Slack this. It's a, I, ha, I found this three and a half inch floppy that I, I'd put the sample website on for a customer. That <laughs> yellow disc. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was how I, I would like build a website and then I would put it on a disc and that, that's what I would give to the client. Creative job solutions. Creative job solutions. He was my college professor, and he started this internet company, and it was so terrible. It was like, I, that's when I realized business education, not yeah. so good. <laughs> Amazing. Um, wow. That's good stuff. Uh, so what did, <sighs> the, at this point, it's interesting because we kind of diverged here. I went into business and you went into programming. Uh huh. And so when you graduated, you were just doing freelance stuff? Yeah, I just did freelance. I, I really couldn't find a job in South Florida that I wanted. Like, it, yeah, not, not exactly Miami, not the mecca of tech jobs at that point, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, I think now there's probably like there is a community and like an industry there, but like any other big city, but then not at all. So I was just like, hitting up small businesses and like make trying to make contacts with whoever I, I didn't know anyone there. Like, yeah. So I was, I had to like be a businessman and then do the work. Yeah. Um, I think that was one of the hard things about back then is if you were in the right place at the right time, like if you were Michael Dell and he just had a bunch of kind of fortunate events that happened. Yeah. He was in a big market. There's a big computer show, but In retrospect, when I think back to that time, the one disadvantage was there just wasn't a market. Like there was no, you know, we'd had the dot-com boom and bust. And then it was like things kind of, people were slowly coming online. Yeah, I don't don't think people really knew the value of it yet or didn't, there there wasn't a huge value to it yet. Yeah. It was, it was getting there. Um, I almost felt like the, the, the future at the time was in, you know, entertainment because there were like, um, you know, 3D animation was coming out at that time. There was uh, a show in Canada called Reboot. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, oh, if you want to be in computers, that's kind of where you got to go. Jurassic Park came out and had all that crazy um, special effects. But I didn't think there was much like, there was going to be like, a, I knew that the web was going to be a thing and that people were probably going to make, you know, some money doing it, but it never felt like, oh, this is going to be awesome. Right. And yeah, the one thing I, the one, yeah, the one thing I always like, 
speaking of being in the right time, the right place, like I never, I never made it out to San Francisco to, to, to work. Mm. And I don't really regret that yeah. particularly like, but it's, I feel like that's a, that's a thing I sort of missed out on is like that. Yeah. That, that experience from like a historical perspective. I kind of uh, wish I, 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 I kind of wish I had built one of those like, um, early internet startups, like if I'd been yeah. a part of it somehow. So this is this is making me think. Like our this whole conversation. Yeah. Did you ever Did you ever watch Halt and Catch Fire? No. Okay, have you heard of it? No. Oh God, you have to watch it. So it was not a popular, super popular show. It won a bunch of awards. They did four seasons of it. It's on Netflix. If you have that. Okay. Yeah, I've got Netflix. It's so the there's early, four seasons. It's the early 1980s, and the spirit of innovation and personal com- personal computing is about to catch fire. Yeah. So each like it follows the same group of people through the rise of the personal computer. Season two is basically the rise of like bulletin boards. Season three oh is essentially. Uh, season three was. Um, season three was they were building a search engine for the internet, and then season four was. Maybe that was season four. I don't know. Basically, it it goes through the early '80s to like the mid '90s, and it co- like it is a. It, I have a yeah, I have a link up there too. It was. It's probably one of my favorite shows of the last like few years. This is it, this is a show like it, made for me. It is so so well done, and like it got better and better, and fewer and fewer people were watching it, and somehow they managed to get four seasons out of it. But like. The cast is great. The music is great. Like it, 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 they're all fictional companies, but surrounding them are like the real companies that you know of. Right. And like part of it takes place in Texas. Some of it is in San Francisco and like it, like it, you've got to watch, like you, you should watch it. Anyone okay. listening, if they haven't, even haven't seen it, uh, you should watch it. It's great. I'm gonna. Really, I'm totally really, gonna watch like, this. Very made me very nostalgic for all the stuff that we just talked about. I'm gonna watch this with my son. Yeah, you should. It's really, really well done from a historical perspective. I showed uh, all my kids hackers. Yeah, and they loved it. I was like, I wonder how this is gonna play, but they nice. were like, Oh, this is so good. By yeah. the way, if you want, that should be a bonus episode for our Patreon sometime. Is you and I watch hackers uh, together live. <laughs> Because my commentary on Hackers is the best. You have not watched that movie until you've seen me do the play-by-play. And when I get excited, like... I it's just, like a riff tracks for the movie. Oh, my gosh. I There's so many things about that movie that I just love so much. Like, I don't like rollerblading, but I love the rollerblading in that movie. <laughs> That's awesome. Just the fact that it's like, okay, we got to go somewhere. And we all get rollerblades on. And then we all... <laughs> <laughs> zip across town with our laptops on our backs it's like oh that yeah so i've never good. done that once <laughs> we, sounds great we need to do this next time we go to chicago <laughs> hack the planet exactly exactly nice we got we got uh i always forget your real name be be pwned but be pwned is saying hack the planet I I think um, that would be hilarious if we did it like a, a hacker's rollerblade run and you have to show up, you have to be wearing uh, spandex. Um, like they all had those, their, their kind of outfit, like leather jackets, mm-hmm. um, laptop on your back. Someone told blades. me in the office the 90s is coming back, like style wise. Oh, yeah. So, you know, might be the right time. I think it is. I think it's the right time. Uh, what city did that movie take place in? Uh, I thought it was New York. But yeah. there's there's also... There's so much about that movie I love. I love that hacker hangout place that they go to. It's like a, a club, a nightclub just for hackers. <laughs> I've thought that that would be like a great business to open now in like San Francisco. Yeah. I can't remember what that place was called. Yeah, it takes place in New York City. And, oh, wait. No, he, he was originally in New York. Maybe he, like, he gets taken somewhere else. I can't remember. Huh. Anyway. Yeah, not a lot of great... Oh, that one's pretty good. Not, like, not a lot of good hacking movies. 
No, but that but, one was, it had a lot of diversity too. Like, yeah. oh man, that was. Yeah, but halt, halt and Catch Fire for sure. If you watch that, let me know what you think. Okay. Uh, I will, I will watch it and report back. Especially the later, the later seasons are just like really, really good. Sweet. Well, I think that's good. That's good for the nostalgia folks. If you um, are listening to the podcast right now, hit us up on Twitter at Transistor FM. Tell us about your first computer, your favorite old computer games. I've got George 11 Best here in the chat saying Commodore 64. That was his. Send us um, links to your web, first websites on Archive on yeah, the Wayback Machine. Yeah, send us links to your first website on Wayback Machine. Check out the show notes to see John's creatively aware. So good. <laughs> um, oh. And we might have to do another one of these. I think this is actually a perfect live show um, format yeah. just to talk about old stuff because uh, you, you could almost just pick a topic. This would actually be a great podcast. Every week, you just pick one of those topics, and you just yeah, go real deep. Go. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's quit doing this show. <laughs> uh, all right, let's let's get into yeah. um, some app updates. Let's. Yeah, if let's, you've if you've made it this far, if you made it this far, congratulations. We do have some, a few small app updates. Um, a lot of it was tweaking and fixing a bunch of stuff with YouTube and our YouTube uploader, which actually. Still need to finish a few things. Um, I f some of you, if you've used it, have noticed that if you publish your entire archive to YouTube, it will stall out occasionally. That's because converting your audio into videos destroys our servers. But <laughs> I, I know I know how to fix it. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, <laughs> it's good for people to hear that stuff, though, because yeah. you know that was a, a feature that we knew people wanted, and we added it, and um yeah didn't really test it all that much sometimes you just got to go live yeah exactly <laughs> um justin programmed some stuff okay uh, sitting in github yes right now this was huge for me um i so i've said this before i've been forcing myself to learn some programming and you just heard my story i i've been a geek my whole life but was just never able to grasp programming and i've done a little bit here and there but now that we have this app and the the benefit i have now is that because transistor is this fully functional product that john's built when a customer like for example travis northcutt had some just little bits of feedback about the screen settings page and I can say, okay, well, I'm going to try to improve that myself. And I just create a branch, you know, search the whole repository for those. I, that was one of the things I did live. I'm like, how do you folks find pages? Because I just search the entire repo for like uh, little bits of content I can find on the page. Yeah, that's a good way to do it if you don't know file names. Um, but he just had, for example, in our show settings, we ask, what type of show is this? And you can choose episodic or serial. And he just said, this makes me so nervous. Like, can I change mm -hmm. this later? What does this mean? And so I just submitted a, a pull request that all it does is in, in brackets underneath, it just says, don't worry, you can change this later. Yeah, you just added some some help text. Yeah, help text. just some help yeah. text. I've, I've added tool tips as well. Yeah. And um, again, the nice thing about working with a partner is I can submit that as a PR, as a PR, and PR. you can you know decide to accept it. You can decide to tweak it, improve it. But it it is a it's allowing me to explore some programming stuff. Mm -hmm. The one that was way more uh, difficult for me is um, if you go to your if you're a transistor customer, one of the problems a lot of our customers are having on the dashboard is we have a link to your RSS feed. But if you click that RSS feed button, especially in Safari and Firefox, yeah. it won't do anything. It just it just says, well, this is a feed. We're not going to show any of the XML or anything. Uh, in some cases, it'll also open up uh, uh, RSS feed reader if you have one. 
And so I thought, okay, I'm going to try to explore ways of making this better. And just live on Twitch, I, I went live, a bunch of people joined, and I explored a bunch of different options. Um, and one option, I just added a little copy button to the right of that button. And it was really fun just like exploring with other people. Here's what we could do here. And what we kind of ended on was you click this button and it opens up a modal where we can explain a little bit more of what's going on. And John, I just based it on, if you go to episodes and you click share, there's a modal that yeah. pops up. Yeah, I, just, I looked at it. I, I do have some feedback. So uh, we I could either submit it or we could try to pair on that and I can show you how I would have done it. Yeah. I mean, like the end result I think is the same. Like I, I actually had this similar idea. I yeah. told you I, like, yeah, that's not ideal where you just can't even see your feed URL. You have to click it. Mm -hmm. I was going to do something really similar to what you did, um, but I, I probably would have done it slightly differently. Yeah. But again, that's the, the excitement is that for me is, first of all, yeah. just getting anything to work is super, <laughs> super crazy. Yeah. But the fact that I've had all of these people helping me live, like I, Holger from Germany is like up, I think he was trying to get his daughter to bed. He has a little baby and he saw I was live. And then I said, can I just call you on Skype? And so I don't know what time it was his time. It was probably like late at night, but he just talked me through on Skype how to do this thing. And um, it's on my YouTube channel. I think I'll, I'll put it in the show notes, but anyway, um, yeah, that's been super fun for me to, even if it doesn't get accepted into the, the product just to like try things out and um, also, I think as a product person, being able to interact with you that way, like being able to say, here's how I did it. And then for you to be able to say, well, this is how I would do it. And then kind of work on it yeah. together. I mean, it's almost like you're, you're building a fully functional prototype. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. I, I think it's great that you can even dive in there and do that. I'm coming for your job, John Buddha. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> and uh, how, how are we doing on SSL? We're, we're getting close. SSL's close. Yeah, I, um, I'm going to try to finish that up today and at least get it tested. So um, I got the, the basics in place. It's going to kind of change how our, how our app is hosted and deployed a little bit. Um, but that, that's essentially going to allow anyone who wants to use a custom domain on their their transistor website to get automatic free SSL certificates. Nice. So that'll be pretty sweet. I'll, I'll tell you one thing I did learn live the other day is I, because I, I call these segments dumb programming questions because <laughs> I just want to be able to ask things with no ego. And so I said, okay, I'm looking at John's instructions and the way I would do it every single time I would program something new is I would bundle install I would run CP config secrets YML, all that stuff. Yeah. And I would run bin setup. And they said, you don't have to do that every time. And I think <laughs> that's why I, I'm my, like we have those S3 settings, like, like the, the, uh, you know, like locally, like here's my API key or whatever it is. Yeah. Those uh -huh. keep getting overwritten. Uh, I think it's because of CP config, right? That overwrites yeah. it. Yep. Yeah, I should change those instructions. Those only, <laughs> yeah, you only have, to, only have to do that the first time. Uh, I should change those instructions. Oh yeah, you could too. I'll I'll issue uh, I'll issue a PR for that too. <laughs> cool. Well, I think that's it. Anything else we want to talk about this week? Uh, no, I don't think so. That was a good deep dive into the history books. Yeah, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode, folks. Um, thanks for sticking with us. We know we missed last week. We just do the best we can when we can. And uh, we will see you next week. Hopefully. <laughs> I say that every time, don't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>